And I'm interested this morning that, that Susie was talking about this concept of being proactive and not complaining about not being told things. And it's about asking more. And this gives you some of those, those tools to do it. The listening with curiosity is very much what we do anyway in cross-cultural interaction. When we are delaying judgment, we're just trying to understand the intention and the process behind it. And when we set the context, not trying to think of them as a starting point if they are the end of it. That actually, there may be a different context that we can create of, of working together. So I'll leave you with um, one quote um, as a thought for the evening. And if you can explain this to me after a glass of wine tonight, I'd be very impressed. And then I'm going to say thank you for, for coming back after lunch, because a lot of people haven't. I'm going to ask my, my co-presenters to um, come up. And asking of you, in terms of what techniques you use to minimise some of these issues, whether you've tried any of these ideas and they've worked for you, or whether you've learnt lessons through maybe um, just your experience, perhaps, of some of the things that we might share as, as ways to, to avoid some of the communication issues that we can get drawn into with the automatic brain. So we have got everybody up now sitting here, and we've also got the access to Jeffrey over here, um, who is short of chairs, therefore we have to relegate Jeffrey. Uh, we should have a roving mic, hopefully, somewhere. So, has anybody got any um, really good tips or techniques that we can get the use of, or things that they have learned? I don't have a good one. Yeah, there's one over there. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Chuck Stewart with Go Here Mobilization Services. One of the things that we teach our consultants to do is not to use double negatives. Like if you're at a table setting and you say, wouldn't you like some more mashed potatoes? Would you not like some more mashed potatoes? Especially in Asia, they'll say, yes, I would not like more mashed potatoes. But if we, they say yes to us, we interpret it that they want more mashed potatoes and give them more. <laughs> then they would eat it because they want to be gracious. And then if we interpret Oh, wouldn't you like some more? And they hear, would you not like some more? So they say, yes, we would not like more. And of course, we give them more. That very good so example of the language and how, how poor language is at, at that. Those right. negatives are just a nightmare. Brilliant. Thank you. There's another one right down here. Yeah. So I'm Andrea Ansu from the University of Brazil. So uh, we have specifics, you know, body language um, in, in America. And I always say to my team and to the expats, you know, it's like um, kind of uh, pay attention, read the context instead of reading, uh, instead of listening, because what is said is not what uh, is meant, yes. especially the day of tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, soon, you know. So I, I always say, if you listen to the body language and the, the context, it's like you hear a voice that you don't hear through the voice. Yeah. So it's like, um, uh, uh, um, some, like uh, let, me, let me phrase this because it's Portuguese. Uh, your body speaks so loud that I don't hear what you say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very good. Very good.
lack of communication. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you have loads of movies. Well, um, uh, one of the things that we see a lot cross culturally is that some cultures have a lot better capacity of interpreting concepts than others. And unfortunately, Americans are probably the worst at high context and reading through. And uh, you know, Asians are very, very, very perceptive. Middle Easterners are very perceptive of, of context. And so it becomes quite crucial in negotiation. And we talked about that in my session yesterday. But one of, one of the things that I have used uh, in, in contract negotiations, which might be helpful to you, I was in a very, very difficult one many years ago. Um, Actually, you were in Ireland. <laughs> in procurement. We all love procurement, don't we? We love them. And um, we just couldn't meet. We just couldn't meet. And I was getting very frustrated and very demoralized and discouraged. And I don't know where the inspiration came from. But I said to the gentleman, I said, well, how would you resolve this? Oh my God. I've used that so many times since. Because, and then of course I paid him a little compliment. I said, you know, you're really experienced at, at this, and I'm sure you've negotiated all kinds of contracts. Somewhere along, you must have seen something like this and have a way of resolving it. And you know what? It was almost like a challenge to him to come up with a solution that would work and be the solver of the problem. So uh, it, it worked really well. And that, that's a good example where, where questions can be a very effective buffer in terms of a customer service strategy. I had that used with me once. I was ranting about something. And, and they said, well, what, what do you think would be fair recompense? And I was like, no, I have no idea. I'm so busy ranting. Mm -hmm. But I, I just took it, well, completely took the wind out of my sails. And then I had to stop and think, oh, I didn't know it, actually. I um, but it was a very effective way to bring the temperature down and, and initiate the dialogue that we needed to have, which is what you're discussing. The most effective tool uh, when you're talking to a client is feedback. To feedback what you think is a, or what you heard. And if you use the, 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 the feedback tool, yeah. it clarifies. I, I, I actually was talking to a client the other day who was, I mean, I thought she was being aggressive and, and mean and not nice. And this is an old client I know really well who's always so happy to see me and treats me so well, and I was just shocked. And so I actually said, I said, Phyllis, are you, are you mad at me? <laughs> After we came out, I said that. I was so confused by the thing. And then I think she realized that how she was sounding, so she checked herself, but that made her also share with me. She said, you know, this is a really high-level executive of my 40-hour week. I'm spending 30 hours on him. And then I heard her pain. And so we were able to fix it really quickly.